couple of people have asked how I make stands for um, the pod books so that it folds up for flat transport and stands up like that. So I'm going to show you. First you get a binder, a knife, or a box cutter, and duct tape. Um, <clears throat> so I need to measure how big the page is going to be. And then I need to slice my binder so it is approximately that. Okay, so we've got our binder. We've cut it into sizes that match the size of the pod. So that's one side, two sides. That bit goes in the recycling, whatever it can be recycled. So now we need to make sure that the um, grotty bits are at the bottom, the nice bits are at the top, and our stand is going to work like that. The grotty bits, the cut bits, they will be covered by duct tape, so you don't have to make them pretty yet. So what you do need to do next is make sure that the, I'm just going to turn that around, simply turned it around so that these pockets were on the inside. I'm going to use those pockets to put in um, like instructions or anything, um, data collection sheets that I want to keep with the pod so they don't have to stick on the back. If your binder doesn't have pockets in the middle, it doesn't matter. Okay, next job is to line up your pod page and punch holes where that matches. So I'm going to do that now. You've got, you've got your stand that has the holes punched in or gouged in. So now we work on the duct tape bit that is going to go down the middle. So like that. The way we do it First we make a double sided strip of duct tape. Finding the end is usually challenge number one. Keep doing that until it's about how many inches is that? <laughs> Six. There you go. Twenty centimeters in my language. So now I've got that many strips, about that wide of one side. Now I'm going to stick duct tape to it to make a duct tape sandwich. going with that until all that's done. So you keep going until you've got one, that's all a duct tape sandwich, and then this bit is one strip of sticky, which, so you plan what it's going to look like, and like that. So now I need to make sure that this lies down here. get a piece of duct tape to run along there.
Danny, he would prefer that I used a pattern of duct tape, but it's not his pod. Okay, so I just need to do this side to make sure that sticks. folds over there and folds over there so it doesn't get all manky and start peeling apart. The purpose to the stand is that you can use it one-handed to model and that it's able to be carried and also able to stand up. The child needs to stand up to point or if you need it to stand up to point or it can lie flat to model uh, or access for the child. Okay, so now I have my stand. If I want to close it up, I do like that. And now um, you either get your old pod that you are re-standing and remove it from this and thread it through or you get your brand new pretty pod um, and thread it through. So we'll take these off. And I love this pod because I can see just by looking at it that it has been loved and used and taken everywhere. Line it all up. Now I'm going to use cable ties or zip ties to thread together. And thread through. So if you just pause for a moment. For some children it's uh, oh, they don't mind having the zip tie end up on the edge. Some children find it very distracting. Some kids find it plain ugly. So you can put um, the zip tie in here, thread your pod pages through, thread the zip tie back through that, and then put it through. Usually leave a bit of room until you've got all the other ones done and make sure you've got enough leeway in it that you can go all the way over. And of course you never flip a pod book, but you can when you are doing the stand. Okay, so I'll do the rest. Okay, so now you can see we've got our stand. I would say, I like this. we have the children's access strategies and the pod instructions. So if you're, you have a student or a child who's learning to use a pod, you can put the instructions there. Um, keep in mind that some children, if they have their pod sitting on their desk they, or on their wheelchair tray, they don't actually want everyone seeing their name and how they access their book. So you can um, get them to decorate this page, put some other funky duct tape on the page, whatever they want, because that's going to be showing out to their peers and their class or to the community. You can make, um, put a sign either on here for instructions, please see inside, or you can write at the top of the pod um, 
time before you use my pod, please read the instructions. Instructions can slide into the pockets that were in the binder, so you can laminate them and stick them in there. Um, many children that I have seen lately have a cover on the front of their pod. That's up to the child and up to you. One thing we need to remember is that for children who are learning to initiate communication and who are starting to use their pod, um, if they have a cover on their pod, then they may initiate by touching their pod and their communication partner will say, oh, do you have something to say? Then they will open their pod up and by that time the child may have lost the desire to say what they want to say, they might have forgotten, they might have moved on to something else. So sometimes when a child is learning to use a pod, what we want to do is have it open on the front page all the time and then whatever they initiate, whatever they touch, we assume is intentional because we are always presuming competence um, and whatever they touch we can model straight away hurry up without having to open up the cover um, and that tells the children straight away that this is power for you not power for me and that you, are, you have the power to talk. 